Hello. Time to speak to Sarah Fillimore, barrister for the Fair Cop campaign, uh, because there's a new hate strategy which could, could criminalise comics, right? We've all seen the Ricky Gervais um, uh, clip from last week where he said, yeah, I'm in favour of those old-fashioned women, you know, the ones with wombs. Now, if anyone thought that was a hate crime, I think I would have to take a baseball bat uh, to very carefully uh, suggest to them that they might be wrong. I'm not suggesting violence of any kind. Obviously, that would be a crime. Uh, Sarah, very good uh, morning to you. Welcome. Hello. We're a bit worried about this... Um, strategy that seems to be going through the House of Commons at the moment, because nobody's that sure. I mean, we keep being told it's all about preserving um, freedom of speech, but at the same time, it seems to be kind of con con you know, sort of convincing us that we could only go in one direction with freedom of speech. And um, that's exactly the problem. And it's not just um, alarming because this is happening. Right. You've got to put it in context. Remember, the Court of Appeal decided in December last year that the hate crimes guidance was unlawful mm. because it relied upon perception-based reporting of hate and there was nothing in the guidance to uh, screen out completely irrational complaints. And complaining about a comedian set must surely meet the definition of irrational. So I don't understand what the government are doing if they're ploughing full speed ahead with something which has already been declared by the second highest court in the land to be unlawful. Right. But doesn't this place um, a huge question mark over uh, all legislation on this kind of thing? Because when we talk about, for example, harm that might be caused to people, it's completely subjective. I mean, you cannot legislate, surely, for what somebody else would call a harmful comment. Because, you know, I could say something to you right now, you might find it offensive, you might find it harmful, and many other people might not. And uh, suddenly we'd all be in a very bad place. Well, that's exactly the problem, because if there is no objective standard imported into this, then you are harmed if you feel you've been harmed. Mm. And the other problem we've got is that many organisations, including the police, the CPS, much of the civil service and the government, are captured by an ideology that says your gender identity is the most important thing about you. Mm. And anyone who disagrees with that is causing actual harm. Their words are violence. I've been reported to the police three times now, to my regulator, I, I can't even count how many times. I was recorded by the police as expressing hatred to transgender people for, and I'm not joking, I wish I was, posting a picture of my dog as a puppy, and the caption to that picture read, my dog would call me a Nazi for cheese. That was, that was on a police <laughs> no. database. That was on a police database for two years and one month until the Court of Appeal ruled it unlawful and Wiltshire Police said, all right, we'll delete it then. The College of Police promised my solicitors revised hate crimes guidance by the end of May, because I still have a judicial review waiting to go wow. against the College of Policing. So they have not provided the revised guidance. So they have not obeyed the Court of Appeal, and they're about to face further legal action from me and Miss B, a teenage girl who is objecting to this guidance going into schools. Because I have to be very clear, Fair Cop has, in the last two weeks alone, had three contacts from parents whose children have been either referred to prevent or been spoken to by the police for hate crimes at school. And it's because of either things that they've said or things that they posted. I mean, I do have to obviously ask you at this juncture, Sarah, whether you actually are a Nazi for cheese, because if, if you are, clearly we won't be able to continue this conversation. I can affirm that I am not now, nor ever have been, nor ever will be a Nazi, <laughs> but I don't believe that women have penises. And if saying that makes Shocking. other people call me a Nazi, that is very much their problem. The difficulty is the police seem to back them up, and that's where I start getting very scared. Yeah, I mean, you would think that the police, particularly having lost that case with uh, uh, with Fair Cop and with, um, uh, with our good friend up, up north, um, that actually they would work out that this is pointless. It's a ridiculous activity. It wastes public money. Going after people for, you know, what they used to call non-crime hate crimes is ludicrous and ridiculous and pointless, isn't it? I would uh, suspect 95% of all rational people agree with every word you've just said. The difficulty we've got as a society, the 5% of irrational appear to be the ones controlling it. Mm. The police, the government, the civil service. It is absurd and it's really dangerous for us to find our essential state agencies absurd. I no longer have any faith in the police to investigate properly. If I were a victim of assault because somebody thought I was a vicious transphobic Nazi, right. I'm afraid I do not now feel confident the police would investigate fairly, 
treat me with respect. Not now I've read what they've written about me on their databases, right. I wouldn't. No. And I mean, obviously, as a barrister, you have to be particularly conscious of this because presumably if you are found guilty of some kind of crime, albeit a very minor one, um, that affects your business, doesn't it? Oh, indeed. Um, in fact, I found out after making a subject access request to my regulator, they didn't tell me this, five complaints which had been investigated and shut down against me in 2020 were reopened without my knowledge. Mm. And I was investigated and sanctioned for tweets which my regulator said were particularly abhorrent. Now, I've objected to that and I've appealed and we'll see how that goes. But it's just part and parcel of the same really terrible picture. I'm a woman. Women don't have penises. I'm allowed to say that. Right. To say that I could face criminal action or lose my livelihood for stating what 95% of everybody in this country would say is a simple truth, I find really frightening. And I, I wish other people would wake up to just how serious this is. I really, I don't think enough people are paying sufficient attention. No, I think that's right, because Stella Creasy, of course, was the latest one who come out of the weekend to say that she believed that women could have penises, uh, to which I said, well, surely, uh, because of her other arguments about the patriarchy being responsible for all the ills of the world, presumably those would be people part, who are part of the patriarchy, so surely you shouldn't be welcoming them in to the world of feminism, because surely they'll just oppress you, even though they might be women, but they have a penis, therefore uh, they are terrible people. I, I feel like we're stuck in some extended um, <laughs> Black Mirror episode. It's true. It, it, it is utterly absurd and terrifying. And it, it does show, really, how the patriarchy holds sway. Because it's men who say they want to be women who are listened to. Yes. Actual women who say, hang on a minute, this puts our safety and our dignity at risk, are told, I think as Billy Bragg said over the weekend, we are equivalent to the Nazis who engineered the Holocaust. And I saw Stella Creasy over two days this weekend, refusing to back down, refusing to apologise, refusing to listen to anybody, refusing to meet with any women's groups. This is frightening. What, mm. what has happened to people? I know. It, it's social contagion of a, a really severe degree. And I just wonder where it's going to end. Absolutely right. And I mean, in terms of what is going through legislation at the moment, I mean, can, can people do anything? Can they... Can they beseech their MPs to, to vote it down or something? Well, absolutely. I think what we can do is make a fuss. We can challenge it. Fair Cop is challenging it in the courts. It looks like my legal action will be going ahead. People can write to their MPs, make it clear how afraid and angry they are, and that we vote. We matter. We're not bigots. We're not Nazis. We believe in material reality. We believe in two sexes that cannot change. That doesn't mean we believe in abusing or harassing people who want to present as the opposite sex, but we cannot be coerced into agreeing that that's actually what has happened. Mm. It, it, is, it is impossible. We're allowed to recognise reality. Sarah, what a fantastic statement and brilliant to talk to you. We must get you on again because clearly you are a member of the Independent Republic of Mike Graham <laughs> on the basis that you are absolutely imbu imbued with common sense. Well said. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Sarah Fillmore, Barrister for the Faircock campaign.